Sound. Sounds ready. Prepare. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. Quiet. Quiet on the set. Quiet on a set. Quiet on a set. Bye to anything you regret. <laughs> Hi everybody. Welcome back to our um Sonic Revolution stream. My name is Shane Thames, and joining with me this morning, or I should say this afternoon, whichever wherever time zone you're in right now, uh, we got a couple of, of wonderful voice actors joining us for our voice actor panel today. Uh, we got uh, Mike Pollock. We got Woo! yeah, I Mike Pollock. Hi guys, and then we got Cindy Robinson is joining with us today. Now. Uh, quick note, I did say, uh, we, we said that Ryan was supposed to be joining us today. Uh, unfortunately, Brian has not been able to uh, show up to this morning, so uh, we apologize in advance that he's not here with us. So, uh, bear, But we still we still got some great voice actors here for, you to, for, for your Q&A. So uh, joining us to do our Q&A today is... Um, Jason, he he's one of my staff. Howdy. And, Yay, Jason. And, nice job. Yes, <laughs> and it is such such a wonderful thing today. I'm just sad to see what's your background, man. I see lots of cool Sonic things back there. Unblur it. Let's unblur see. it, Jason. Oh please. no, this this room is please extremely nice. <laughs> <laughs> right, I can feel it, Magic. All I've got here is like a little Sonic Build-A-Bear that my niece gave me a few months back. A Sonic Colors poster. That's about That's about it. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm going to turn this over to Jason to get our panel started. So Jason, take it away. Hello. How's everyone doing today? Boy, am I thrilled to be here. And so is Cindy. I'll speak for her. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> He speaks Thank for you. all of us. He has all those voices in his head. I'm the Lorag. I speak for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's great to have you guys back. And it didn't cost me, uh, me and Ladise, $500. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't now, discussed the rate. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> How did you two get your uh, start in voice acting? Mike? Can you go? Okay, I'll go. Yeah. Uh, I I started in radio, loving radio as a kid, loving theater as a kid. When it came time to pick a career, I thought, well, radio is a little more stable than theater, just by that much. So I did radio for a while, so I got a chance to be a disc jockey, do production, be in commercials and stuff, and then uh, did community theater on the side to keep the acting, acting chops going. And once radio had had enough of me, 
I was able to fall back on the freelance voiceover career because I had all the voices. I didn't have to deal with those pesky radio people. And I got to do commercials and cartoons and stuff. So it was a natural progression, such yeah. as it was. Uh, I was actually a theater baby. Um, I was 19. Uh, I came from Oklahoma. And I moved to New York City. And I got a Broadway show. And then I got a couple more after that. And it was fabulous. Stephen Sondheim put me in his, uh, in a show. And, um, and then all of a sudden I got injured. And I started to not look like... Because uh, I'm 4'11". I don't know if you guys know that in fandom. Um, I'm only 4'11", and I started to not look like a 14-year-old anymore by the time I was about 35. And uh, so then I went, well, what do you do next? And it was like, well, cartoons. So I moved to L.A., and I got into uh, voice acting. I originally wanted to come and sing jingles because I did musicals. And that was about the same time that they stopped doing uh, original jingles in car in commercials and they started just licensing songs that were already existing and um, I had a friend who said I can get you an audition for a cartoon and I booked it and built it from there cool. okay Mike you are the longest running uh, Sonic series voice actor so, uh, so far outside of uh, Sonic's it's on the oldest I'd, I'd, I'd say <laughs> outside of uh, Sonic's Japanese voice actor Junichi Kamaru has been voicing him Sonic since Sonic Adventure up to Sonic Boom even. Um, what do you attest to your success with that with the Eggman character? Um, just like with all voiceover jobs, they haven't stopped asking me. Um, I keep doing what they like, and they keep liking to hire me. So it's really, it's beyond my control. Just like any job, you can do the greatest job of, the, of, of all ever, but if the boss says, bye bye then it's bye bye They've yet to say bye bye Can I weigh in on that question? Please. Sure. He's also the most prolific voice, I think, that we've had in the entire series. He's got so many voices. He is talented, easy to work with, and and ridiculously on point when it comes to knowing the brand. And I think Mike Pollock uh, is a, an incredible boon to the franchise. Oh, can I drive safely? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke either. I don't. I don't think that quickly. Oh. <laughs> no, that's, I, Mike has been around for a long time because he's the best. Oh my God! Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. You're the best too. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, uh, I didn't really see you know like Mike's versatility as much in Four Kids, but when the Sonic Boom cartoon happened, they gave him so many roles and uh, such a wide variety of uh, versatility there, from Fastavious Beaver to the Mayor to all these other characters. I mean, uh, you got an amazing voice. There are people who don't know that I was fastidious beaver or the mayor. So there you go. <laughs> you. Now, his range is incredible. And um, and and when you get a, a producer that appreciates that and writers that appreciate that, let's go back to Bill Freiberger and and Alan and, uh, and Greg and these guys that really wrote for him and wrote beautifully for him because they were in every session and they saw what he could do and they they went with his talent. And we had our, our great director, Jack, who oh my God, up Jack. the best in all of us. So Right. It's a group effort. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Sure. So, thank you. Yeah, uh, Direction uh, is the next uh, key for what I wanted to ask uh, Cindy on this next question. You know, your uh, characterization and tone of Amy Rose has changed dramatically from when you first started. I think it was on Sonic Free Riders where it was more of a uh, Minnie Mouse type voice up to uh, Sonic Boom where... She's this like mature, almost uh, the leader now. Was this a case of uh, getting to learn the character uh, progressing over time, or was this uh, mainly like a direction? This was, I think, this was choices and, and the way that the series was reimagined and reenvisioned. And I think it was very true to what girls were feeling at the time. Um, in the original stuff, I felt that Amy was more of a sidekick. And they really let her uh, shine as as a as a woman. I, I mean, for lack of a better term, at that. That's not saying that anything coming before that was bad or wrong. It was just kind of the natural progression of the way things worked out. And um, you know, originally we come to things, especially when we're taking over a role, and they want a voice match. 
and they try some new things sometimes and sometimes they don't and um jack was really instrumental jack and, and bill freiberger were both really instrumental in saying hey let's let's see what else we can where else we can go with this and so i thank them both for that and i will add staying true to the character and staying within the voice lane but taking it where it needed to go you've done an excellent job Cindy. Thank bravo you. bravo thank you. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, it's it, it's gone from well, one where I wasn't too sure about it to my favorite Amy Rose. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think my uh, Mr. Pollock has the most experience with this. I'm I'm not sure entirely on uh, Cindy's career for this, but is it more challenging to dub over anime versus an American cartoon where dialogue is recorded after it's animated? It's a little bit easier to do it first because you don't have the constraints of you have this much time and these many flaps to speak. You can take, well, within reason, take all the time in the world. And it, it works really more like old time radio. We call them radio plays when we're recording because it's just we're speaking naturally. And as long as it can come together and be edited for time, it's great. But it's not constrained to a little faster. You got to pause here and then a little bit, just a little wider with the mouth. and it, Stop. Let me talk. So prelay, we call it. Prelay is better. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we might, this interview might be cutting short without Ryan here. I had a few questions for him as well. <laughs> Listen, Mike okay, can talk that, forever, so yeah, we got we got tons of content. <laughs> we'll take questions from the chat. Can we? I don't know. Okay. Um, so. Oh, here's boy, a game. What what questions did you have for Ryan? We can answer them. Oh, cool. <laughs> I don't know if that would work. Uh, Here, wait, wait. Yeah, it's a joke. Hi, I'm Ryan now. <laughs> All righty. So uh, let me see what I got here. Okay. Uh, spoiler alert for, I don't think there's anybody here who hasn't seen the Sonic movie, but uh, so I'm just going <laughs> to. Wait, I have. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. It was, uh, at the end of the movies, we saw that Colleen o O'Shaughnessy, who voices Tails in the series, got to voice Tails in a cameo. But there's no guarantee she'll be voicing him again in the sequel. I mean, there's actually a petition. Was it a petition on Twitter that they wanted Tom Holland to voice Tails? And I'm like, no, Colleen, did she'd be the best. Not now, a casting work, but fine. yeah, I was gonna say, what do you feel about celebrities doing voiceovers? You know, in movies for well-known characters who already have a well-known voice attached to them. Mike. I'm a little biased because I'm already here and I'm already doing this um, and they could ask and I would do it for them too. But it's, it's comes down to money and getting butts and seats. Uh, big names get bigger butts and seats is not what I meant to say. More I'm butts and seats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. More I understand. Seats. Yes. In my That's case, they get bigger butts. That's <laughs> all right. But it, yeah, it's, if you want to get more people to see your film, they'll go to see big name people over uh, the, Possibly smaller named, but perhaps better qualified people who the true diehard fans would much rather see or hear. I personally hope they go with Colleen. I think Colleen's voice is, it has a, a, a naivete to it that is, uh, that you can't duplicate. Uh, she's one in a million for me. I, and she's a terrific actress. If they go with Tom Holland, he's great too, but he isn't the original tales in my head. Um, it'll always be Colleen. And if they need to reach either of us, we are available right here. Right. <laughs> just, just saying. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because that's, that's part of the business anyway. Um, and I think that sometimes voiceover, um, people think it's an easy gig. And then if you look at some celebrities who have done some high profile voiceover gigs, they've kind of fallen flat, not to mention any names, but that's happened. But then you have some that have just absolutely been brought to life. Uh, Robin Williams, you know, in uh, as, as in Aladdin, mm -hmm. as as uh, yeah. yeah, as the genie, and um, Ellen DeGeneres. I mean, these are these are things that I've never met a voice actor that could bring what they brought to that. But I think it goes both ways, mm -hmm. and I think that that's um, that's something that should be considered and not just put in. I mean, already Sonic has the name brand value. You know, so really give it the best shot that it's got at being the best product it's got. That's my opinion. Okay, um, just a question I thought up on the fly. Uh, what's the difference, do you feel, between uh, 
voice acting in a studio for, say, a, a video game versus when you're doing like an animated series or an, or an anime? Yeah, I, I, shop, sure. Um, video games tend to be a little more disjointed just because of the nature of video games. Stories can fork in any different direction, and we will usually see just our lines and a little bit of context coming from the director. Um, but for prelay cartoons or even dubbing cartoons, you'll have most, if not the entire script in front of you. You may, in fact, have other people with you doing it live. But even if you're just doing it in isolation, you've got a script. You get to see some of the dialogue that comes before, something that comes after. And you can kind of get a better idea of, of how things work. And it tends to be going from beginning to end. You'll only do if you're dubbing this scene that you're in. These are your lines. We're doing your just your lines. But it tends to flow a little bit more. But... If we're good at what we do, and I tend to think we are, you can't tell that we don't know exactly what we're doing. Right. Yeah, uh, okay, as outside of the uh, Sonic roles for a second, um, what other voice acting role would you say you're the most proud of? Everything. Can you give that an answer? <laughs> I love working. Go, what did you say? You're not working? I, I love working. I love doing whatever I'm doing. I, even the most boring, what did I do the other day? A medical onboarding clinical test kiosk voice, which you think about it, this is not exciting. This is weird and creepy. And yeah, but they hire me because I get to make boring things sound interesting. And I'm kind of proud of that. And for me, I mean, I've done, I've done a lot of stuff uh, outside of the animation realm I was the most proud of being in a Sondheim show on Broadway, Into the Woods. Um, that was a big deal for me. Thank you. And um, but now I I I'm moving into directing, and that's that is absolutely what I'm finding to be my passion, and something that I I I, I love actors. I love directing. I love storytelling. And I think that it's it's really the new direction that I'm going to head pretty much exclusively. You know, Chris works in the booth too. You know, and there's still jobs that come along, and I'm really happy about them, and I'm loving them. And I love to do video game work. Skyrim was a big one. Um, and I was, oh, what's her name? And in, in the Sailor Men, Queen Beryl. That's it. But if you ever ask me about my career, I don't know what I've done in particular. I can only tell you what I want to go to. And that's that's the big thing is that I just, I'm loving directing. <laughs> hey, Mike, I've got your number, right? You bet. <laughs> Boy, I'm, I'm, I'm all source connected now. Okay, cool. Yeah. I still remember you, uh, somebody giving me the link to your, your Yummy Nummies <laughs> commercial. Oh, yes, that. I was like, yummy nummies. I, I think uh, uh, stuff you, may, you may hear me coming up in soon, uh, a little more IHOP action uh, and uh, our Clash Royale stuff as the Red King. Cool. Uh, cool. Uh, was, that leads on to uh, one of my final questions here. Uh, what projects are you currently working on that you can legally mention? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's stuff. I, 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 still I, currently working and legally uh, mentioned are two. They're oxymorons for us. Yes, I probably already said too much, but all the same stuff that you know me from before. Probably some of that you'll see again, and then some other stuff. When there's something to say, I'll tell you. I'm directing a series right now for a very large online streaming company, and uh, there's music involved. How about that? Cool. Mm -hmm. How about that? Very good. Okay, now <laughs> since Ryan's gonna sit here, I. I have no more questions on that, so I just gotta <laughs> go on on the fly. Um, Wing it, man. What is it? Okay, the, so I'll go with Mike first. Uh, uh, what is it that you enjoy about the uh, Eggman character himself? What uh, What do you see in in him exactly? It's very cathartic. If I go in with any issues, any built up uh, pent up aggression, it will be released by the time I'm done and have yelled my brains out for four hours. And he's fun. He's he's turned, especially in Sonic Boom, into a crotchety old man. And so am I. So, kinship. Kinship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Sonic Boom, he's kind of a, almost self-defeatist. He's, mm -hmm. he's kind of pretty much accepted that he's going to lose almost every time. And uh, how much fun you have with him. I really do. Because, again, being in the new director's chair over here, there's so many people that are so worried about the sound, about what's it going to sound like. And my 
Mike, first of all, has the sound, but he just lets it go. And it's just, it, there are reads that come out of him that I never saw on the page. And that was so, that's always so fun to watch him in action. Innovation, there's no room for innovation in the booth. There's just room for me and my brain. I'm so crazy. <laughs> Let loose. Well, hopefully there's some space for oops. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so a similar question for Cindy. What is it that you love about the Amy Rose character? Um, I love that she's a badass. I love that she wears pink proudly. And at the same time, she is not afraid to show her feelings. When so many times I think that girls are told that there's a box that they have to live in. And that they can't, you know, in order to make everybody happy. Amy does that for a moment. And then when it doesn't work, she's, it's okay to just let her spirit fly. And she does. And they've allowed her to do that. And I think that's just fabulous. Okay. I am going to see if I can get to the, uh, to the discord chat and see if they have any questions. Sure. Cool. Let me see. Go into uh, the panels room cove and I, there's already a bunch of questions being asked right now. Panel room, panels room cove. Yeah, is panel. that on Discord? Yeah, it is on Discord. It's the panel room cove. Okay, I might have been in the wrong move. Uh, let's see. Oh. While we're padding for time, if I may plug my next appearance, which will be for charity coming up shortly. Sure. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll be uh, doing a uh, guest visit on Race for Good 2020. And I've even made a bit.ly code for you can ch check me out. Bitly, bit dot, it's a link shortening. So let's see if this actually works. Okay. Bit.ly slash RFG2020, all lowercase. Here, I can hold it up on the screen, can't I? Wait. This Text is so, me. Thank you. Here, wait. <laughs> Hang on, wait. I broke it. Wait a minute. Wait. Visual aids. Not working. Do it this way. Wait. Not that one. This one. Here we are. This is the code. Pull back, pull back, Bucky. Pull back for, pull back, keep pulling. Wait, I'm going to turn off the light. Turn off the light. Wait. Okay, let's see if that works. Is anything? No, see it's white. Now? Fuzzy, I, right. I think it's Skype just blurring stuff out, so. Oh, Skype is stupid. Hitly <laughs> dot, <laughs> hit dot L Y slash R F G 2020. That's all you need to know. I'll tweet it. I was going to say, all of a sudden, a, a bunch of people want to put their butts on screen, and we're like, yay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Putting it blurs everything out. Woohoo! <laughs> Here, now it's not blurry. My glasses are on. No, that doesn't work at all. No. Oh. <laughs> you know, actually, I saw those hanging around your neck, and because I know you, I knew what they were, but I was like, oh, he has ponytails. For the kids, it doesn't really go on. There we go. Hi, there look at that. There you go. Thank <laughs> magnetic tricks. Wait, what can I pick up magnetically in the drawers? Hang on. We are padding for time now. Ah, <laughs> work here's here's some Why science am I not finding the room okay, Ooh, oh. magic Schedule. Are you you? Cove, yeah, there we go, there we oh, go. There, you found it oh good okay uh this is from sega saturn uh what was your favorite sonic game that you voice acted in can i start i'll start i don't play I favorites start. i don't know the names I love working. I don't play favorites. It's like having a favorite kid. If I chose a favorite kid, my son would be so angry with me. What? I didn't say that. That was not me. It, it, it's, it's correct. His son would be angry. <laughs> yes, very much. Um, the, the, I love working. There's no. It's tough to pick a favorite. The favorite will always be the next one. Whatever favorite is your favorite. Sure. Friend who asked the question. Mm -hmm. That's what I loved. Your favorites are better than ours. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, here's a real simple one from Ravi. Uh, what is your favorite food and drink? Hi. Right. Um, I'll take an ice iced coffee and an iced coffee ice cream, and then I'll never sleep for the rest of the day. Wow. Chocolate. All right. All right. I'm fond of the coffee myself. I've got a little espresso cup with me as we speak. Uh, it's a daily thing, and it depends on the day with the food because I love to cook. So right now, believe it or not, I am getting into beans, all sorts of different kinds of beans. But before it has been uh, Jap my Japanese smoker. Uh, I got into that for a while. I love to eat fish. Um, I just am an avid cook, so it kind of changes all the time. 
Okay, uh, this is from Supersonic Blink. This is kind of an interesting question. If uh, both of you could voice a character other than your own from the Sonic series, uh, what character do you think you'd you'd be? Well, if we hearken back to uh, Sonic X, where I also played that other maid, by the way, um, Bokun, voiced by uh, Broadway and television legend Andrew Reynolds, his annoyingly high screechy voice that he could do all by himself with no digital effects, I wish I could do that. Because that just made me laugh. Sticks. No, I just... Mm, yeah, Sticks. Good choice. Excellent choice. Sticks. I did not know uh, Boken was voiced by a male. Wow. Yes, he was. Because <laughs> that, that is a high voice on there. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what he does. Did they call him Minnie Mouse? Uh, no. <laughs> More like uh, ear bleeding mouse. But gotcha. Mouse. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess this is from... Sec- from Sakura Robin, what is your favorite line that e- either Eggman or Amy has said? Ooh, pop quiz. Uh, again, not playing favorites. Uh, so whichever one is your favorite. But I know the one that tends to be popular with the kids. Uh, Snooping as usual, I see. Which I voiced in Sonic Boom most recently. I'm going to crazy pizza man. Thank you very it's much. It's the one that, that I get the most attention for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And of course, evil ham. Thank you. <laughs> you even have evil ham. You bring I it. I do. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Make your own. Your grocer's uh, canned goods aisle. Look for deviled ham. Get some correction fluid. Paint it out. Thank you. I'm getting this question a few times uh, for Mike. What was it like uh, dubbing for Sonic X? Tons of fun. We worked uh, separately because it was a dubbing thing. Uh, but uh, Andrew was also the director, so I worked with Andrew a lot. And we just had fun and lots of laughs. And uh, I got to be uh, not only Dr. Eggman, but out of the maid, which makes me laugh to this day. All right. Let me, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit. Let me see. Okay, for Cindy, how does it feel to join this virtual event celebrating everything Sonic the Hedgehog, including uh, Amy Rose and such? Love it. Love it. I mean, what's not to love? Uh, It's a series that means a lot to me. Um, I loved this cast. This was the best. We had the best time. We met weekly for, what, two years, Mike? Mm -hmm. Is that about right? And Oh, good Lord. They were, I don't know that I've ever laughed so hard. I've done a lot of cartoons. I've done a lot of stuff. And this, this was one of the, one of the most fun uh, sessions that I, I looked forward to it every week. We're a good bunch of people, if I do say so myself. They are. Absolutely. It <laughs> does give me a good uh, question for Mike. Uh, how different was it from uh, dubbing in Sonic X where you're probably just by yourself and, uh, studio to uh doing a full voice uh, thing with, with entourage with other people sure. for like sonic boom for me it's a weird hybrid situation because we're recording at the same time but not in the same place i was usually in new york in a studio it's listening out awesome. yeah kind of m- m- not unlike this we're all unhappy <laughs> um and the strangest thing the couple times i got to fly out and record uh, in person with everyone i forgot i was there i forgot that i could look through the glass and see our director and production team and talk to them and i said Oh, wait, you're here. Oh, so that was really cool. But, and see, we yeah, just thought you were ignoring us. Yes, well, that's true. I'm very antisocial. <laughs> um, it's great fun just to be able to... As I, I miss the days on stage where there were people around all the time and you get to uh, not only act but react. And so the joy of being able to react with my fellow actors, tons of fun and a lot of laughs. He also has amazing skin. Can I just tell a, a, a story out of school? So we're doing a taping, and he's in the makeup chair ahead of me. <laughs> and they're doing his, and they're just like, oh, your skin, your skin. And I'm like, hey, I'm the girl. And no, Mike, Mike was the pretty one, totally the pretty one. Thank he you. Gorgeous, gorgeous skin. It helps to be a recluse. <laughs> it pays to be antisocial. <laughs> Okay, I have. Uh, I think it's gonna be our final question for Cindy. This is from Naturally Dark. If it were up to you, how would you like to see Amy Rose's character develop moving forward? I would like to see Amy 
taken very seriously as a force. I would like to see um, storylines that revolve around what what girls are now doing and girls can do. And instead of always being in a support, oh, that's not true, always, no. Instead of mostly being in a supportive role, I would love to see what Amy's life is like. What what happens when she gets to be stranded out there without the without the gang? How does she how does she work her way out of it? I think that that's a strong character. I think she's got good moral fiber, and I think that it would be really interesting to see, you know, what what she could accomplish. All right. Well, thank you so much, you two, for uh, for being on this. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys so much, and thank <laughs> you, Sonic Fandom, for still be, for being interested in in what we've got going on. And we love you, and thank you so much for making this the project that it is. Yeah, if you're not watching, we're just wasting our time. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, and thanks, thank you. All right. Yeah, thank, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for that. Um, coming up in the next few moments here. Um, we uh, Coming up next, we will be meeting Sonic the Cosplayer. But first, if you're looking to uh, meet and greet uh, Lee Majdub, uh, join the meet and greet chat one channel on Discord and tell us our keyword to win a chance to meet Lee. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, coming up next, Sonic the Cosplayer.